Hello and welcome to episode 45 of the Critical Twitch Gaming Podcast. This week, the first in our ongoing series of Board Talk, rounding up the latest news and goings on in tabletop board gaming. Welcome back to Board Talk for September 2016, where we're going to round up some of the latest news in tabletop gaming and tell you a bit about what we've been playing, what we've been up to as well. Mm. Um, I'm Brian Ennis. I'm Aaron Vinsky. I'm Joe Lewin. And I'm Jeremy Myland. And yeah, we're going to talk about all sorts of different things today. We've got quite a packed schedule and Aaron needs to go home. So we're going to talk and talk and talk (laughs) until he cries under the table. Um, Yeah, there's been quite a lot going on in the tabletop board gaming world. We're going to talk about some of the mergers and acquisitions that have recently happened. Yay, Um, business! Yeah, but will affect pretty much everyone that plays games um, and probably not in a a good way. Uh, We've had a bit of a breakup. Cue sad music here in the uh, in the board gaming world. Oh, okay. I thought you were kicking me out. Well, I mean, I wouldn't have blamed you, but it was making me a bit sad. Oh, <laughs> dead silence. Okay, cool. <laughs> Is he? Who told him? <laughs> um, and we have been playing all sorts of games. But first of all, a couple of weeks ago, as a group, we headed down to our local gaming cafe place called The Den. So if anyone is in the Peterborough area, uh, this will be really, really useful to you. Yes. If not, we're going to talk a little bit about the idea of gaming cafes as well. Um, So that will be useful for you uh, as well. But rather than us explain the concept of The Den, we grabbed an interview with one of the founders of The Den. So here you go. Hello, so we're here with... Uh, Adrian. We're here with Adrian at The Den, a pop-up games cafe um, here in Peterborough. Yes. Uh, So thank you for for talking to us and letting us come along and play some games. You're more than Um, welcome. I'm very much looking forward to representing Atlantis, uh, the country (laughs) of my forebears, um, in your your Olympics. Um, The the mighty nation of Atlantis. (laughs) And Joe, you've picked Kasnia, which is where all the bad guys come from. That's from DC Comics, yeah. It was it was in an episode of like the animated season of DC, uh, the uh, Justice League animated season oh, okay. series, and it's like uh, so it was a thing as we kept cropping. I was like, yeah, essentially yeah. represent some kind of yeah. axis of evil. Sounds about right. Yeah, there are, there are a number of there are yeah <laughs> um, there were some, they, they weren't the friendliest of people. Yeah, cool. <laughs> uh, they, they've yeah. got quite a nice flag. Yes, it's very Which nice. Flag. To be fair, I couldn't I couldn't find a proper, I couldn't find a flag for Temescara or anything. So yeah, or anywhere on. Krypton. Uh, yeah, so beyond the use of so, you know. Yeah, cool. Take so, in the way. Yes. Yeah. yeah, cool. Uh, yeah, so could you just give us a little bit of background on the den and okay. um, well, how and why, yeah, really, well, I think. The why? I was invited by a friend years ago to essentially a to games cafe in London, and I sort of, as I was sitting in there, sort of playing some games, which is actually essentially when I was introduced to modern board games as well. Mm. I, I, kept, I just kept things like, Something like this could work in Peterborough. And so like, sort of over the years or later, it sort of formed like it sort of stewed in my mind. And it was actually um, when Close Encounters opened. And it's just, it kind of gone to my head thinking like, uh, oh, okay, I could kind of use this as like a measuring stick. If that's like still going after a year, maybe there's enough of a geek culture in Peterborough to support like a board game cafe. And so like, I happened to manage to remember after a year, it's like, oh, it's still going. They're doing well, and I sort of like you know, I sort of asked some friends if they'd be interested in coming on board with me, and they're still on board with me, which is great. And yeah, it's like we made it happen, and here we are. Excellent. How long yeah. ago was that? Uh, what the initial thing of going yeah. to the place in London? That was cool. Probably it was maybe about five years ago, maybe four or five years ago. Yeah. Yeah, for anyone that's yeah. listening that isn't sure, Close Encounters is our local comic book shop. Yeah. It's our f- yeah. it's the first property ah, we've had yes. in Peterborough. Yeah. Yeah. We used to have a market stall um, yeah. that did similar things. 
yeah. badly. Yeah. And then we've got this um, yeah. this amazing there, little shop. There was another comic book shop. It was it was really out of the way. I I happened upon it I was one say, time. It, it was really <laughs> out of the way. Yeah, it was. Like, I just happened upon it. It was. Like, it was yeah. So it's, yeah, it's, a, it's a proper comic book shop. Yeah, because I mean, people would expect one to be. I've known yeah. a lot of people over these that are into their comics and have never been told of another one. So yeah. it must have been fairly well hidden. But yeah, no, it, it's 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 an awesome shop and it's it's quite nice that it's given you a bit of inspiration to. Mm go off on this venture yeah so you're currently working once a month uh, yeah yeah once a month currently and um, is there, are there plans to expand that uh, there are yeah I mean my original plan was for it to be like in a fixed location that open every day yeah so this is sort of like yeah build up a customer base and yeah and yeah also if we wind up going for like yeah someone to invest or something mm-hmm. we can show them yeah it's like look this kind of works <laughs> yeah definitely yeah, uh, I'm gonna assume you're all big board game players uh, Pretty much, yeah. I, oddly, of, of the lot of us, I'm probably the least big board game player. But I, I, I watch a lot of board game stuff, you know, I watch Tabletop, I watch, you know, I watch, you know, all the stuff on Geek and Sundry, you know, you know, mostly Thursdays. <laughs> you find you're too busy organising things to, uh, to play as much as you uh, could. Because we find that we end up talking about there games is, There is a bit of that, yeah. Them. There is a bit of that, yeah. So, so all the organising is like... Also, like, yeah, when we meet up, like, it becomes a lot of, like talking about the business and you sort of like get to a point where it's like, eh, it's not like just playing board games like it used to. I don't know if I want to go there now. <laughs> yeah. I, I kind of feel like we're stopping him playing games by making him talk about it. Oh, we're deep down some worry. kind of Don't worry about that. So with, with, with the running of this, there's not much of the playing. It's great fun watching everyone have a great time playing mm. them, though. It really is wonderful. But actually, yeah, the first event was probably my favourite thing. So we had like a bunch of people, like individual groups. And then they slowly merged and so into it with like one huge group at the back because we had like two long tables. Like, they were awesome. one huge group at the back, so like, slowly all coming together and just like really? making like having a laugh together. It's like just over board games. And it was like that's what board games is about at its best. This is so great. <laughs> and that was on the international tabletop day, Excellent. which was on our first one was because well, we thought if we can if we can start it then, then let's start it then. <laughs> yeah, it's a great time to, yeah. to get people involved. Is there is there a most popular board game at these things? Is uh, that everyone seems to want to play. Uh, there are sort of a bunch of games that are very popular. Um, Suro is very popular. Camel Up is very popular, which is actually the game that everyone was playing at okay. the back. In- interestingly enough, um, Master of Six was popular, but then it they realised that all oh, that kind of takes the entire time of being here to play. Yeah, <laughs> you know. But, um, Stop looking at Twilight yeah. Imperium or something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Do you have a favourite board game? Do I have a favourite board game? Um, you can up as amongst them. Um, I, I very much enjoy Cash and Guns. Mm, yeah. Uh, Cash and Guns is a, good, is a great one. Uh, I like games with, like, like um, articulate games like that, where you're like, oh, yeah. like, sort of kind of trying to figure what people are talking about. Actually, you know, so you kind of look at that, that way. You push it, it's great fun. I, just, I don't know, it's not it's such a board game, but it's great fun. It's, a little, it's one of those games that is very quick to play, but it's like, one more game, <laughs> one more game. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, uh, you've got a, an Olympics theme this yes. month. Is yes. the theming a monthly thing? Uh, we, yeah, we've been doing a theme each month. Uh, we started with, oh, well, I'm trying to run now. Uh, I'm trying to think what the first three, last month we had History and Heritage. I remember that one because Peter had like the ter- big heritage festival yeah. in July and so, so yeah it was fitting for that we had Europe was the one the month before that okay yeah, yeah. we decided the same so what we figure is like if it's if we leave the EU then it's a yeah it's a farewell to Europe and if we don't then it's a celebration of all things Europe you know <laughs> so yeah it works out either way but <laughs> whereas we did a really cynical nasty bit of comedy <laughs> yes, we did. and sarcasm over about Cyn- there's nothing minutes. wrong with it but <laughs> it's, 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 cynicism is good but you yeah. seem much more positive than us we, had, uh, yeah, we, we created a board game in our minds yes um, <laughs> Yeah, it was awful. <laughs> so you've got you're much more positive, and you've got much nicer t-shirts. I like your t-shirt; it's, uh, yeah. it's very good. Um, so well, we, we, we we spent money on the logo, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we didn't. No, you. We, I, I'm halfway through making this one at the moment. Yeah, but we um, slave labour. I look forward to seeing the new logo. <laughs> yes. Oh, don't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Excellent. So, what's the what's the the special thing this month, sort of game wise? Uh, well, as I said, we have a dexterity tournament, which yeah, features well, dexterity can push it, as uh, lift it, which is all like using cranes sort of with the things, and uh, rhino hero, and there's also the sort of overall sort of like yeah, sort of 
Olympic tabletop gaming. Yeah, it's, like, it's pick a country, you know, take, take a sheet each, and yeah, so fill in your scores and how you do in the games, and then sort of leave the sheets behind, and afterwards I'll do witchcraft and maths and come up with like a leaderboard, like, like at the Olympics of the country. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Sounds yeah. great. Well, I'm looking forward to playing some games. Yes, definitely. Um, yeah. We might have to press you into showing us how to play Shadows of Camelot, because to my eternal shame, I've said, uh, Shadows over just, Camelot? Just Camelot, Camelot, isn't it? Is it Camelot? Yes. Shut up, Ron. Um, never played it. Uh, Whenever yeah, anyone sure goes... I thought you, did you mentioned it. We might, I, going, I, did, I did mention it. Might, have I just made a thing up in my head? I do apologize. <laughs> That's fine. If you find a game called that, then I'm happy to help you. <laughs> yeah. Find, you know. No, I'll <laughs> scrub all that then. But I'll we'll appreciate if you find that. All the things you've oh, mentioned you sound, that. sound really yeah, fun. We, we, have a lot, we have a lot of games. Yeah. So, uh, probably, yeah. uh, it, we, there is every chance we do, it, that we do, and I've forgotten. So we have a lot, yeah. yeah <laughs> we have a lot, yeah. <laughs> I think we might be over 120 at this point. Nice, that's good. You yeah. have to buy more things and catch up with you. Play like Formula D again, Joe. Oh, yes, Formula D is good. great. Formula yeah. D is very good fun. Yeah, I, I do enjoy it. It's the sort of game you don't get a chance to play it so often. Mostly because the board is so big. <laughs> Takes up a lot of space. <laughs> yeah, we um, borrowed it from the very similar uh, Meeples. Thirsty Meeples. Uh, uh, Thirsty uh, Meeples, yeah. yeah uh, at, uh, yeah. The UK Games Expo this, uh -huh. this year. Yeah. Uh, um, just for the end then, how can, if people are interested in coming along or seeing what you do, how can they get hold of you? Uh, Facebook is the best place. Uh, it's you know, the Den Games Cafe. Yeah, um, in the Den. In fact, we have. Oh, a, come on here. So it's, uh, yeah, yeah, the Den Games Cafe. Yeah, link. At the Den Games Cafe. And uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, the Den Games Cafe is pretty much the same thing on everywhere you know, Facebook, Twitter, in the Den Games Cafe, you'll find us. Yes. <laughs> so on pretty much all social media. I love yeah, the so idea of us having a proper games cafe that's open yeah, every day. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I would amazing. love to be able to get to that point. Yeah, so yeah, come yeah. down and support them and we can yeah. help you make that yeah. game. Yeah. 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 Just to say, whilst we are currently at uh, the... Um, I forget where we are now. My ne brain Neen Neen Valley, Neen Valley, yeah. Valley Community Centre. Well, there is a possibility that we'll be moving, but that will, there'll be an announcement. We'll let people, make sure that people are aware of that fully. There's a possibility of moving. We're not sure. We'll see. You know, that... Uh, yeah, it might be an idea to let people know. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Give, give give them a like on Facebook. And, yeah, give us a like. You can follow along yeah. if uh, if anything yeah. changes. Uh, but that's great. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, Yes, yeah, so as was said, The Den isn't a fully established gaming cafe yet. It's a pop-up gaming cafe that happens once every month. Now, Aaron, I know you've visited several brick-and-mortar gaming cafes, well, if you like. technically so. I mean, first year meeples we all went to at the board games expo. I didn't actually go that to the was, store there. Yeah, that was that was the pop-up version of a brick-and-mortar yeah. thing, wasn't it? Oh, God, um, yeah. So temporary over the course of the, yeah. um, of the event. Yes. Yeah, and I've been to Drafts in London. Cool. Um, for my birthday? Yeah, around that time. So about Novemberish time. It's a rocking birthday. Yeah, it was. It's actually, I'm actually jealous. Didn't that, invite us. No, what a dick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not, yeah. Well, not one of us, not one of us. <laughs> Either of the other two have you been to any of these gaming cafes? I haven't. I really wanted to. I um, haven't had a chance to yet. Yeah, no, it's not something that I've, I've had much of a chance to do I've been to places where you can borrow games yeah um, yeah we um, the Rift our local shop has a couple that you can play yeah and we were quite politely uh, politely no we were quite pleasantly surprised at the Hobbit Hole because um, they have a selection of games that you can borrow and play as well yeah. that's awesome so some stores have a similar yeah, thing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, gaming cafes are fairly new and recent. Yeah, and actually recently um, I was quite surprised to visit um, this, the Argo Lounge uh, in Peterborough City Centre, oh, right. um, which I think is actually quite uh, gamer friendly. Um, while they don't have any what you know be modern board games, good, they do, good board games. Yeah, they do have a selection of, of classic board games that you can borrow and play in the in the. Okay. Really, I've lounge. been in there several times and not noticed. Yeah, they okay. Um, so and I think they'll be quite open to you know you playing other games there. Too. I've walked past and looked at it and gone, I wouldn't fit in there. And carried on walking. <laughs> it's really nice. So yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is a classy joint. <laughs> Um, not the kind of seedy dive which we'd expect you to frequent. Yeah. Yes. Um, what do we think of the idea? And Aaron, we're probably leaning heavily on you here. Good stuff is to them. Yeah. Um, yeah. I really liked it, to be honest. If 
the location wasn't perfect because it was very echoey in there because it's a uh, proper brick faced building so there was a lot of echo of people chatting and stuff in yeah. there which is unfortunate but you pay a small fee to come in and then you because they're so busy you get a four hour slot uh, to play them not all, yeah. I don't think all ball game cafes run that they, yeah some places have different amounts of time some yeah. places let you just sort of hire a table for a day it depends yeah it depends yeah. On, their, on their busyness and they did go on weekends so it was one of the busier areas um but their board game selection was huge. There was about eight shelves worth of games, covering everything from the classic ones like the Argo Lounge do to, um, yeah, some big games like Twilight Imperium and stuff um, are available there as well, which I can't imagine how you'd fit a game of that in in that four-hour slot, but it's there. Um, but, yeah, we managed to get through about two, three games while cool. we playing. Um, and they board game cafes normally, because they're a cafe, serve you food and drink as well. Yes, um, yeah. So, which is not normal because most game stores tend to frown on you eating and drinking at the tables because they don't want you to get their stuff damaged. Yeah, well, I, th- I think it's things. quite fair. Really. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, but this, it's obviously put into the price that you're paying a little bit to get in and play the game. So they've got kind of an insurance policy going on for any damage I going guess, to the games. Yeah, because if you've got a forty quid game, yeah, um, and it's five for- pounds to get in per person. Yeah, cool. So if you've got eight people that. Or two groups of four people that play this game, yeah. and it it gets ruined. It has kind of paid for itself. So yeah, yeah, it seems like it'll actually cover the the cost of itself quite quickly if things were to get damaged. So yeah, it, yeah I, can, I can see the yeah. the benefit of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, if there's if they also sell games, they do. Then they're probably buying the games in at retail price, so yep. it's actually less less sunk cost. Yeah. In that case. Um, and they're probably hoping that you'll play something that you really like and make a purchase. I mean, at yes. the Games Expo, we played Good Cop, Bad Cop mm-hmm. in a big group yeah. um, of people that didn't know each other very well because um, we had some visitors yeah. um, as well, yeah. and I liked that enough to pick that up. I didn't buy it directly from them, uh, but yeah. I did buy it later. If they were selling it, I would have bought it from them because I'd feel duty-bound. They're the ones that let me buy yeah. the game and play it. Yeah, exactly, same thing happened. Uh, um, drafts, um, we played, uh, me and my wife played um, Suburbia, yes. which she which really, still, really got on with. You still haven't brought No, I haven't brought for her to play, no. Curse. We haven't had a proper board game day, though, to be fair. Yeah. It's a, not long, but it's an expansive one. Um, but yeah, my wife really, really enjoyed it. Um, and I found it really fun, so was going to buy it they didn't have a copy there at the time but I went and bought it when I got home and have it now yeah. because I'd played it there there were a couple of other games I played that I now won't buy because I know they're rubbish <laughs> which is really nice to be able to actually yes. test that beforehand yeah. as a person who has kind of like a, an, a horrible magpie like tendency to see a review of a game or hear someone talking about a game or someone just mentions a game's name yeah. nearby or I've often found that if we're in a gaming shop and there's something I think looks cool and would like to play if I wave it at you for two seconds you go ooh and then buy it yeah. <laughs> and yeah. then it's crap yeah and then I and then I sell it at expos and get some of my money back and yeah. go ooh I've really bought this so this is free money I can spend it on crack and blackjack and hookers and <laughs> heroin and Gum, gummy bears for my eyes. No, uh, more games generally. <laughs> for for moment, I thought it said Kraken Blackjack, and I thought that's some fascinating new game I haven't heard. Of. Yes. Yeah. If you fail, you get thrust into the sea and eaten by a giant squid. Yes. Mmm, delicious squid games. <laughs> right. Um, what do we think of the den itself then? Because we went along. We are not contractually obliged. They have paid us no monies. No. Nope. Uh, so we can be completely brutally honest. I thought for for pop up cafe it was it was actually quite well organised yeah. and that the uh, the people there were very helpful um, and you know got yeah, uh, yeah I really enjoyed myself I yeah. had, had a great afternoon but when you, when you say helpful I mean I often find with anything like this there's a fine line between helpful and interfering yeah, yeah. and I don't think they cross that line they no. pop over and go oh is everything you you doing all right yeah cool and then we will yeah. just leave you be which was really nice yeah they offered to help explain things yeah yes and it when we said no we are men we shall <laughs> forge ahead on our own well, and I think fail. It, it was mostly no like, he's rules bastard pointing yeah. at me yeah. uh, he'll yeah. look at the book and tell us how to play yeah and then they did. Yeah. Um, Which was the, absolutely fine. Yeah, the food service yeah. was good as well. Mm, yes. Yeah, um, the food was nice. The milkshakes were good. Mm, it didn't very take nice five years to get anything, which was nice. And yep. they didn't charge through the roof for them. That was one thing I did no. found at drafts, which even London prices, some of their prices for their food and drink were ridiculous. Which again might be a way of them recouping some of the potential of damage course. the food does. To, I, you could almost put a 
yeah. this damages game tax on certain food. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I would assume a bit like quite often in um, the hospitality trade, your money's coming from your drinks and such like, yeah, and yeah. actually the table space, especially you consider rent in London. Yeah. Uh, if you're going to be renting a space to play games... Yeah, you need some way of making. Oh money yeah, back. Of and London's ridiculously expensive. Yeah. Anyway. That's why we all live in a windmill in the country, <laughs> Peterborough. What am I saying? Words. Um, it, yeah. was also, it was also really nice that they, you know, they would serve you at your table. They would also take your order at your table if you're in the middle of a game. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Really, really good. You wouldn't have to break off and. Uh, do anything yeah. Else. Yeah. I, I can see that the the table service of coming over and taking orders potentially dropping off if it got really busy. Yeah, it might be um, difficult to keep on top of, but, but they... I mean, they, they gave you a little thing with a table. You, well, you Each table had a table number, so yeah. you could go, I'm on table so-and-so, much like any other place that does food normally would yeah. do. Yeah. So, yeah, no, generally, it was it was really, really good, and we played some pretty good games there as well. Yeah. Yeah. A wide selection of games. They did. Yeah. yeah, and one of the things I really liked is that each month is themed, mm. and when we played, it was themed around the Olympics, because it was the end of August... Yep. At the end of August. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, the it was the end of August, so the Olympics had been happening that month. So they had a dexterity games tournament that we joined in. Yeah, well, um, three of us joined three in. Three of us joined in, and one of us was turned late. up eventually. Turned, yeah, <laughs> and then dangled your worm with your wife. I did. <laughs> Playing some kind of crazy... ten- tentacles, wasn't it? No, it was worms. It's a worms. fishing game. Well, they, yeah. no, I yeah. they, they looked like tentacles to me. They, yeah. they did, and they felt like tentacles. They, but were, they were worms. They felt amazing. What game was that? The, uh, wishes for fishes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I had no interest in playing the game, but the, yeah. the, the ten- I could have just awesome. quite happily squashed the worms <laughs> into yeah. my face and enjoyed the feeling of them. They were very pleasant. Um, yes, yeah, so we played all sorts of dexterity games. How did that go? Well, one of us might have won the tournament. Yes. <laughs> yeah, uh, due to, due to dodgy um, rulings on point scoring, in my opinion. Um, yes, but Jamie won, which is actually becoming something of a habit. Yeah, if we have this song, I'd have to up my game. Yeah. Um, this is interesting because I know Jamie's not the most competitive game. Not at all. No. Joe is, and yeah. Joe keeps coming second to Jamie, yes. like in the Netrunner <laughs> tournament and yeah. that kind of thing. It makes um, me happy in a way I can't really describe. You're on my team, piss off. <laughs> but we also we also played, there was someone else who joined in that part with us. Yeah, there was. And when we played the Resistance later on, someone else joined in. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we got some of the staff joining in when we played Concept. So it was quite nice to meet new people and play games with some yeah, yeah, people as well. It was a slightly more sort of sociable experience. Quite a lot of the gaming cafes will have you can put a flag up and say, Join us, join us. Yeah. And you can, you know, if you're yeah. there's only two of you but you want to play some bigger games, you can mm. go along, join in. Like, like a crap cult recruitment seminar. Yes. <laughs> and would you a like cult recruitment can... seminar, very yes. organised business like cult. Yes. I think Jamie was going to say something sensible. I was just going to, <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say as well. I thought it was really nice that there was quite a wide range of age groups uh, and people. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. 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 There was some of those like proper little people that yeah, just come out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brand new in box. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, well, there were <laughs> lightly <laughs> soiled. <laughs> Sorry, I need to say it. It will pray on my mind. But yeah, I think there were um, sort of two family groups there. Yeah. Um, I think the lady that played with us in the skill tournament was with one yep. group, um, possibly a parental figure, and then there was another group as well that were playing games. And yeah, it was really nice to see mm. stuff catered for all ages, essentially. Yeah. Um, if they do one while I have my daughter with me for the weekend, I'll quite happily take her along and get to play yeah. games, because she loves that kind of stuff yeah. anyway. And as we said, there was a wide selection of games, so mm. there were things suitable for younger gamers, yeah. there were things that... You know, us old crusty, we like a challenge gamers, we're quite happy to, to play uh, and get stuck into. So it was a nice selection of, was, uh, was. of different things. Um, yeah, just shall, quickly. Oh, sorry. So shall we talk about the actual dexterity games you played? Yeah, that, that was exactly what I was going, going to say. Excellent. Um, so if we start off with the dexterity tournament and talk about the couple of other games we yeah. played? Yeah. Yes. Brief thing. Yeah. yeah, so there were three games we played. Yep. Um, should we start with um, Push It? Yeah, push it was like a, a was like crokinole light. Yeah, okay. like crokinole without the board. All right, you yeah. could play it on a table. Yeah, so rather than having a hole in the middle like yeah. you do in crokinole and pegs, you put a centre. It was a, it was crokinole crossed with 
What's no, the not ice bowls. One? Um, um, curling. 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 Yeah. Mm. So you you flicked your pieces to get it near the middle one. Okay. But you could flick the middle one flying across the board. Yeah. If then, you knocked it yeah. off, you lost, and you could knock the other person's things. And after everyone's flicked, it's whoever had. I the managed contest. to get an accident, accidental awesome block where I managed to flick uh, one of the kind of puck things at the target in the middle of the table it then rebounded off that and stopped directly in front of the opponent's next move yeah thanks nice. so, <laughs> <laughs> um, so they couldn't really actually flick theirs which wasn't was... that when I got annoyed flicked it a bit too hard and knocked yes. the thing off and lost that's yeah, not because I was getting yeah. annoyed as, as the owner of Crokinole I'm quite happy to say that I managed to beat both Joe and Jamie at that um, but then lost to the lady who joined us and it was the only game she, she won because I got cocky yeah. <laughs> and, Sucks. and she was a great sport she was, um, yeah, she was, yeah, um, great and she was great fun to play, play games with um, but I got, I got really cocky and was trying to be clever and then she just absolutely hammered me I don't, I don't think I scored a point um, so I, I learned a, 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 a pleasant lesson in hubris <laughs> we'll see <laughs> no I, I learned nothing I never learned anything <laughs> I'm too old to learn um, so yeah that was cool um, yeah. if you like these kind of things it's a really easy one you just need to take the pieces with you, you can play anywhere yeah and awesome. a nice little box and you, yeah, any any flat surface you could even mm. lie down on the floor and flick things at each other if you really wanted to as long as you've got a smooth area yeah and buying the game <laughs> makes that more fun so <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. uh, yep. so secondly we had um, lift it so we had push it and we had lift it. Oh, I was terrible at this. I loved lift it. I was I, so I uncoordinated. Really it. Is this the one with the crane? Yes. yes. Yeah. It was really, really good. Um, <laughs> and I did really well against Brian and the woman. Um, we don't have a name, which is unfortunate. Yes. I think it was yeah. Laura? Possibly. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and then... Uh, again, it came down to four. <laughs> me playing against Jamie, and I got. Shall we stuck. describe what it is? Yeah, yeah. Because I, I always thought it was the crane. And it's, 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 it's mate. You've got a selection of different three-dimensional shapes. Yeah, yeah. They're uh, like Tetris pieces almost, but okay. slightly more advanced. So yeah. some of them are very they're blocky Tetris pieces, but yeah. there are also circles in there. Oh, there's, yeah. there's a, oh. A, cyl- a cylindrical tube and a sphere. In there too, Ooh, or yes. for the less the less um, highfalutin, a pipe and a ball. <laughs> this yeah, is how right. I, so I, was just about, I was just about to explain it that way. Then you use this wonderful technical language um, and made me feel very as sad. A, as the as a math. scientist, <laughs> <laughs> precision is key. Yes, I'm a geometrist, don't you know? <laughs> no, <laughs> shapes are rubbish. You're a geometrist, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> but. It, I mean, it was it Take was really the good. Pipe <laughs> to cast your spells. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, what you would do in the game is a um, a card would be flipped over. Both of you would get a chance to have a look at it. Yeah. And the card would have a time limit on it, and okay. you had to build as much of the structure on the picture out of the shapes you've got as quickly as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it was. I found it really easy until I played against Jamie and we had a really complicated thing, which was yeah. very similar to something I'd done already, but I couldn't get one piece to do what I wanted to. Yeah. I, I think on the first game I played of the day, I kind of looked into a really good technique and yeah. I just reused that every time. And Yeah, because yeah, you were doing the, the, things very differently to what I was. The gimmick with that is that you don't just pick things up and move them around with your hands. You've got a plastic crane with a dangly bit of string and a hook on the end. Yeah. Yes. Ooh. And you've got to yeah. swing it and hook it in, lift it up and move it. And you it. can only use that crane to affect the pieces. So yeah. well, that sounds evil. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I managed to just have everything swinging wildly, demolishing nearby buildings if this was <laughs> some kind of real life crane. Um, I'm very, very glad for the people around me that I didn't go into the construction industry <laughs> because it would have become the distro industry very very quickly um, yeah like we, we noticed um, picking it up getting it into place it wasn't quite in place just just swinging the hook into it a couple of times to knock it a little bit because yeah. they weren't heavy um, was interesting now obviously it sounds a bit weird like how are you how are you hooking it each of the pieces like if you imagine the, the long bar one for example yeah had holes all the way along on all sides okay um, so if you imagine the Plastic cubes that you click together that have the circle, the the the, 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 the maths cubes. Yeah, the recess circle and one that sticks out that you can push in. Yeah. If you imagine it built out of that, but Lego it being hollow all the way through. No, because yeah. the the circle holes make yeah. a point. So you could, if you built a shape out of that and hollowed it out, that's kind of what it was. Yeah. Mm. Um, 
yeah, it, it was lots of fun. There is a upgraded version, as it were, or makes it more difficult, where the game also comes with headbands. <laughs> and you attach the crane to a headband. Yeah. Um, which is quite sounds really I'd difficult. I lost an eye. Yep. <laughs> um, and on top of that, you can also play it as a team. Right. Where you hook two of the crane bits to a single hook. Yeah. And then you have to work together to lift. <laughs> oh. um, the guys that run the den were saying that they have quite a lot of fun when drunk using the headband and doing it as a team <laughs> thing, trying to build stuff. Yes. I think we'd punch each other yeah. in frustration. Like, you're doing it wrong. I'd do that anyway. Damn you, Colin. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, it was good fun. Yeah, that was... Uh, that was that Different. Was, yeah, it was something I was terrible at, but still enjoyed. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah, and finally, uh, we had uh, Rhino Hero, and uh, by Habba Games, H O B A. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. And um, that was that was a lot of fun. That was amazingly good. Yeah. Brian, Brian, and I had a uh, an, an epic final. We did. We did. Um, where I, th- I think rules weren't particularly clear, and we got confused. Well, we were we were screwing each other over by very lax interpretation of where things should go. So we were. Yeah. Um, what. <laughs> What yep. is Rhino Hero? Is Rhino Hero you get like a controller with some coloured buttons on it and you press them and you lift the rhino's legs? Yeah, you get you get a plastic rhino and if you lick his neck his leg comes out on the screen and <laughs> No. Um what it is, you have a, a set of playing cards. Okay. Um essentially. Well well cards that you play with as opposed to actual playing cards. And on each one it has a set of sort of L shapes. Mm-hmm. So they might be with the points facing inwards, yeah. or they might be uh, in different opposite corners. Yeah. And those L shapes show you where you have to put wall segments. Okay. So you have another set of cards that are bent in half into these L shapes. Yeah. You place them on in the correct place and place another segment on top. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, so it's the, like building those card like towers. a card tower, but sideways. Kind okay. Of, almost a bit like Jenga as well, in that you're constructing kind a wobb- uh, yeah. ever more wobbly edifice. So. Yeah. The card you put on top when you've played your walls um, dictates where the next person has to put their cards. Okay. So you're trying to play ones that are going to unbalance it on their go or going to be tricky yeah. for them. You'll also have symbols where you have to place the rhino once you've, uh, once you've placed your, your It's bit really on. badly balanced. And those are little wooden meeple type piece. Yeah. But if there's already, the rhino's already in the building, if another rhino comes down, you have to take it out and put it Ooh, on. Yeah, there's yeah. only one rhino hero. So you A lot of... Rhino peasantry that doesn't quite the building, but <laughs> yeah. only only Just one watch. hero. Yes, Jamie used to show me a picture of uh, Brian and Joe playing the game, and I vaguely remember seeing this in the background and screams of frustration as it's oh, there was. They're, yeah. they're basically, I it got to the point where we would put it on and then take a giant leap away from the table just so you weren't touching it when you're the first <laughs> yeah. it's taller than I could reach. Yeah, I had to tiptoe to, to finally lose. <laughs> if you don't already follow the crit- critical twits on uh, Twitter, uh, and if you listen to this. Why not? But, um, <laughs> Do it, you uh, fools! But if you, if you scan back uh, to the 27th of August, there's uh, some rather amusing pictures of Brian <laughs> and Joe playing this game. Uh, yes. it, it was... The tension you can you can sense. Bizarrely, by the time it got down to me and Brian, I think my sugar levels had dropped and my hands were shaking, <laughs> yeah. which is very unusual for me. Um, so I'm sat there going, I don't even want to go near it because I'm just <laughs> trying to drop that in place and run away. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah it, was, so, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, great fun. And that was the dexterity tournament. Yeah. Um, but we did play some other games as well. Yes. Um, you played Wishes for Fishes. If fishes, if wishes were fishes, sorry. Cool. Wishes it's such a mouthful, fishes. I can't remember how to actually pronounce yeah. it. Wishes yes. were fishes. Which sorry, was... Eat your dishes. Yeah, so it's a little bit like a worker placement game. So you collect fish, which you've got a limited amount of space in your boat to hold them. Yeah. And you can either cast them off, and they, they can cast your wishes for setting them free. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow, that's quite um, cute. But you get little things, or you can sell them to the market. Um. <laughs> so you've got magic wish giving fishes that but you, you just go ah yeah boil my salmon you mother <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes yeah. madness um, did quite... you sell them to Captain Bird's Eye they did, <laughs> into... did look a little bit like Captain yeah. Bird's Eye on the box yeah That's amazing um yeah, so and then those market stores can get full. Obviously, once they've got excess fish, they can throw them in the trash. That's even worse. <laughs> There's a literal garbage heap that you throw them in, throw these fish full into. Full of magic fish. Yeah. Jeez. I'm going to look at fish fingers in a completely different light. Now. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah. You were magic once. <laughs> Make a wish every time you have a fish finger, and maybe uh, some of the residual power still lurking within its crispy shell. Uh, I wish I was rich. Bite into it; it's a penny in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you snap a tooth and get a hideous dentist's bill because socialism is dead, as is the NHS. Cool. Moving on. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Too so real. Just, <laughs> a little bit. Anyway. <laughs> Um, yes, yeah, so this is about moving the demand of the market around and trying to fill it up and get the right wishes to flog off as many of your cars at the same time as once because you get bonuses for uh, doing more at the same okay. time. Um, and it also comes with, um, like, plastic, I suppose they are. Worms that feel like the old... Like boglins, actually. Mm. They felt if, like boglins. Yeah, <laughs> if you've been watching... Jim <laughs> a little bit, yeah. <laughs> if you've got children you will have encountered at some point the uh, weird stretchy centipede things yeah. that kids seem obsessed with because yeah. they're yeah. bizarrely cool. having played with them again I can understand why they're weird yeah. yeah thankfully they smell disgusting so you're not going to want to put them in your mouth because they do feel like gummy sweets yeah little. yeah but they have that horrible plastic smell yeah they stink it mm. doesn't stop children eating them oh dear uh, yeah so probably don't play this with children Although it is a kid's game and it's won family game awards and stuff like that. Um, I don't play games with children. <laughs> you look away for ten seconds and there's like three of them hanging out of their nose and one in their ear. And they do seem that's to... just playing it with Brian. Yeah. Um, I, I, I am the child of the group. Yeah. And I'll say they, they have been made sort of a size they can't fit in children's orifices, but <laughs> <laughs> after exclusive critical Twitter testing. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Cool. Um, Did you have fun? Yeah, yeah, I quite enjoyed it. Um, yeah. It was fairly easy to pick up, so that was really helpful for that kind of scenario. Mm. Um, yeah, it took a turn, me and, all got, and me and my wife kind of figured out exactly how to do things, and it was it was good. Cool. Awesome. We played, before you arrived, Darren, uh, the tortoise and the hare. No, we hare didn't. and the tortoise. The hare and the tortoise. Yes. <laughs> oh. Which oh, had... Just uh, changed that. Which I have yeah. to say you had, um, like, one of the nicest boxes... I've yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it's really pretty. It's like, like a, a book, yeah. storybook. Yeah. Oh, that's really nice. Yeah. yeah. So it opened up a bit like a book, um, Ooh, and how piece. It had quite a nice. The the board was quite nice that it changed each time, even though it didn't even, make yeah. a difference. Mm-hmm. It looked different on a superficial level. There, there is a very. The only difference that that makes is where the rivers are. Yes. Which yeah. can impact the game. Um, yeah. But yeah, it was it was it was pretty. The pieces were nice. It had little. Like massively superfluous podiums and yeah. gates and all kinds of stuff. It's just very nicely themed. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah. It's all about racing animals, so like the tortoise and the hare. Yeah. But you also had a fox, a sheep, a wolf, and that was it. Yeah, was and, and the hare and the tortoise, obviously. And the hare and the tortoise. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Who all have different rules for moving, and basically you play cards to goad them along. Yeah. yeah. The big so. beginning of the game, you get given a character that you are betting on winning yeah. and you get to pick another one from a set of cards you get given yeah um and then basically you are trying to make your two come as high on the podium as possible oh, okay yeah but you're drawing cards sort of at random so you might end up with a bunch of cards that you don't want so it's then tactically using those based on because each animal moves differently based on the number of cards yeah. down yeah so there was sort of a level of sort of tactics and such yeah, like to it. There's a little bit of sort of set set matching. Um, yes, yeah, and I could imagine that could be in a really good fun game for younger. Yeah, because it was it was simple, but there was a bit of depth to it, and yeah, it, yeah. actually, it was really fun. It was actually yeah. fun. It was it was quick. It was very quick. Yeah, yeah, it was all right. I wouldn't. I wouldn't rush out and buy it, but no, I'd, I'd happily I'd play, play it again. again if yeah. it was. Yeah. yeah. See, whereas I might buy it for playing with rocks because I think she yeah. did do it. Yeah. Cool. Um, the game that I think we probably had the most fun with, though, uh, and we played as a as a bigger group, mm. yeah. uh, was the game Concept. Yes, yeah. that was excellent. <laughs> Wonderful. Ooh. Ooh. Now, to try and explain the concept of Concept, <laughs> I need a series of pictures. <laughs> um, concept, you draw a card, and on that card is a concept, a thing. It could be a celebrity, it could be an emotion, it could be a famous phrase or saying, it could be a place. There's all sorts of different things it could be. Mm. Uh, and they, they're graded by difficulty. And then without communicating verbally, the people trying to explain will put down a series of... You've got various different markers that you can use on the board. The board yeah. is full of different ideas. 
represented by pictures. Yeah. So you might say um, you might have Al Capone, for instance. Yeah. And you will put um, the biggest sort of exclamation marker explaining what it what it is on the sort of celebrity or related person. Uh, person. Yeah. Yeah. Then you might put another marker down on um, history. Yeah. And something saying that they're real, so it's a real historical person. Then maybe something else on crime, crime, or violence, or yeah. Yeah. something similar. And you you build up this idea. You have little cubes to link ideas yeah. to um, different things. I'd say the, one of the interesting thing is the icons and the symbols and images on the board can be interpreted in different ways. Yes. Yeah. yeah you you get a really nice sheet with it that says this icon is normally interpreted as this, this, or this. Yeah. So you might have the. Um, I'm trying to think of a good, a good example for one. Ah, oh, brilliant. Jamie's just passed me some pictures. <laughs> um, so there is a, a heart, for example, which could yeah. be love, could be romance, could be Valentine. You know, there, there's, there's all kinds of different things you can link these things to. It could yeah. be yeah. life. It yeah. could, yeah, this this is it. There's... Um, yeah, and there's... It, oh, it's, it, it, it comes across very similar to code names. Mm-hmm. Yes. Where it you so are trying things. to essentially figure out the group's way of interpreting those pictures, so you're trying to find a similarity yeah. in that interpretation. Yeah, you're giving clues to try and, and solve it. Yeah, um, it reminded me of dingbats. Do you yeah, dingbats. No. Yeah, and it's it's basically a it's kind of like charades or charades. Yeah, but you know, using pictures instead of miming on a. Yeah, on maybe a less silly level. Yeah, and and having the depth of being able to link ideas, which is really nice. Yeah, uh, I mean, like for example, the um, the easier things were stuff like what what um, what were the, the easiest set? I can't remember any. We had like things. train, I think. Or yeah, so very simple things you could play with. Again, you could use with kids if you wanted yep. to. On a medium level, we had things. We quite struggled with the Jungle Book. That was uh, medium, we took it? a while on that. That was medium. Yeah. Um, so you have like famous books of films. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't it was the Blue. Jungle Book. It was Baloo, and it was trying to get that, to yeah. use yes. book and nature and, and fiction and, and character and, and singing and, and then grey for and the blue. bear and bl- yeah. yeah. And it, it, it gets so to a we, point where you overcomplicate things. Trying yeah. To so a few bits. times you go right. Let's start again, and and you'd you'd work your way through and. Yeah, it was very it was very interesting. We got um, very stuck on one of the oh, was it one of the hard ones where we had Eureka. Yeah, where you're going. Okay, it's an exclamation. It's to do with science. It's to do with happy. It's, it's to, to do with water because we yeah. had. The and we were trying to make link to when it, the the original story of yeah. when it was used. Yeah, and yeah, it, yeah. Oh, it was amazing. It was yeah. a really good fun game. And really, really good. I just while you were discussing that, I just bought it. <laughs> I just remembered how much fun I had with it, and um, it's yeah, it was it was great. It's yeah. a completely different kind of game to what we normally play. Yeah. On a on a strange level, you could relate it to Dixit. Mm, yes, yeah. yeah. Um, and if you enjoy games like Dixit, like Code Names, like stuff like that, that's you're more information based games than it is competitive I love, or anything yeah, like puzzles. that. Puzzles. Yeah, it, it's a puzzle, but you're puzzling out the delivery of the puzzle as well mm. as the interpretation, and, and it changes because you take turns delivering in, in the pairs. clues or receiving the clues. So it, you're playing two different games. Yeah, and I yeah. love that kind of thing. That's definitely worth mentioning as well. The kind of the pair scenario. Yeah. So if say there were six players, it would go, go round in groups of two. Yeah. Um, yeah. Take well, it, it in turns. If you take the four of us here. Um, it might be Joe and Jamie will deliver a clue and then Jamie and Aaron will deliver a clue then me and Aaron will deliver a clue then me and Joe and you'll yeah. go round like yeah. that because that's the order that we're saying and then yeah. and the player who guesses it gets like two points and the people who've been trying to put across the impression get a point, get a point each, each yeah. and yeah. if right. you're struggling as a pair to to actually get the idea across you can always bring somebody else in yeah yes. you, can, you yeah. can invite someone to join in which means they would get a point for explaining 
but they would lose out on the opportunity of getting two points by guessing it. Yeah. So it becomes a weird. There's almost a bit of a sort of. Yeah. If I didn't have a clue what that what on earth was going on, I'd volunteer myself. But if I felt like I was nearly there, I'd be like, no. I want yeah. There's a couple of times further. where where I think me and you both went, no, I don't want to join your team because I reckon I can get this. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I think another thing that's actually quite similar probably to Dixit is that with Dixit, um, a lot of it relies on your kind of relationship with the other people around the table yes. and knowing what they know and the kind of the in references. Yeah. Oh, like yeah, well, my, my favourite Dixit moment we've had was we were all playing it at Rob's with our normal group. I yeah. think this was where... I wonder, maybe we weren't playing it at Rob's. No, I think we were playing at one of our other friends' houses. Yeah, we were, and um, I I played um, down... I, I used the word a heroes as my... This is what yeah. I'm putting down. Yeah. Yeah. So expecting every, everyone will put down things like, oh, look, this is a person stabbing a dragon, etc. Yeah. And put down the picture of a feast. Yeah. Because a hero's feast is a D&D thing. Yeah. Um, thinking, haha, Brian and Aaron will get this because but, uh, they've played yeah. it and the other person doesn't role play with us and so I won't have a clue. Yeah. And then you've got that's your best ideal thing in Dixit because if you make it so obvious everyone gets it yeah. and you get penalised if only some people do then that's great. That's yeah so it was yeah. like haha this will work and weirdly our other friend got it and I think potentially Brian I got did. it. Oh, I didn't I don't uh, think. No. Oh yeah because you, you while you had played some with us you hadn't played enough to get the, the link. No. Yeah. So yeah, it was it was a really interesting. That that was cool, and it links very nicely to this. In the yeah. again, like you said, knowing the group you're playing with. Yeah. So it was great to go along to to the den because people doesn't have a brick and mortar gaming cafe yet. I know that's something yeah. they're working on and they're working towards. Uh, but really happy to uh, to support them to go along. Ooh. If you are in the Peterborough area, uh, we'll pop a link below where you can go along and see when the next one is. And we will probably, I don't know if all of us can make it, but most of us will be mm. there yeah. Yeah. Uh, playing some games and uh, joining in. Yeah. Excellent. Right. Moving away from fun things to the business side of things, as Aaron said. Yes. Um, there have been a, a couple recent developments in board games that we thought we'd talk to you um, about uh, and give you our sort of perspective and, and impression of them. The first one, then, Asmodee, about six weeks ago, acquired F to Z Entertainment, which covers Z Man Games. Mm. Philosophia and Plaid Hat. Yeah. So three other companies all in one. Yeah. Uh, covering like Carcassonne, um, Pandemic, yeah. uh, Plaid Hat, do Dead of Winter, the oh, recently yeah. released Ooh. Seafall, or just yeah. sort of coming out, Seafall. Um, big companies. Mm. Yeah. This actually gives them control um, over uh, Days of Wonder. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fantasy Flight Games. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. own the Catan series, which they bought off of Mayfair. Mm -hmm. um, da -da -da -da, let's have a quick look. Um, a lot of the big Euro games are out there. They they've got the rights to now. Yeah, they 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 own just just to go through um, some things. Ticket to Ride, Dixit, Citadels, Talisman, Small World, Seven Wonders, and Catan, as Wikipedia has just told me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but big games. Yeah. They now own Bar Bar sort of Hasbro and Mattel. Mattel. They're probably it's the it's the biggest group who own board yeah. games, you know, board game publisher mm. in the world. Yeah. What do we think of the idea of so many games being brought under one roof into into one company? <laughs> there are potentially well I'm gonna basically play devil's like it's some benefits to it. Yes. As they're a large company they now have more purchasing power for shipping crates which can be really expensive and buy yeah. bigger ones and ship more in one go they've got more leeway with manufacturers so they can obviously get the pieces built a little bit cheaper which potentially could then pass down on to cheaper prices for the games yeah. however yeah I mean just talk about economies of scale yep yeah. um, so anything that's bought en masse um, will be cheaper yeah. uh, the economy of, of having one distribution network you know one place that you go and say I want all these massive popular games and you tick three boxes and you get a huge shipment to your shop yeah. uh, for instance is you know potentially very very good yeah. however having played Netrunner we all know the evils of the mega corporation <laughs> 
Yeah, I mean, as, before we jump into all the bad things, um, I think as another positive potentially is if you've got this one big company that's that's doing all this stuff, and we'll get into some more specifics of this recently happen, occurring mm-hmm. later. Acquiring licenses may be easier because they've mm. got more money to put behind it. So you yeah. might actually find a few things that weren't being licensed so much before might then become an option because there's more money to shove behind this these things. As an aside to that, there's also probably the potential of cross-pollination between uh, some of these licenses. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean... I mean, looking at WizKids, for example, who yeah. have Marvel, DC... Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Yu-Gi-Oh, etc. You don't really see that kind of crossover in anything else. No, but mm. one company owning more than one license for lots of different things mm. might allow something like that to occur. Yeah. Whether or not that will be good is another question. No, but, but the ability to do it is yeah interesting. That's very true. Also, on the potential yeah. positives, potential positives, right? Um, now the the sort of size that's likely to be rivaling Hasbro and Mattel. Mm. And in recent years, we've started to see games like Catan in sort of just general stores. Yeah. Do you think there's more likely that some, you know, what we'd consider? Well, yeah, yeah. If they've got the push the power, advertising, yeah, yeah. Well, they don't even need to. They can walk into uh, WH Smiths. WH Smiths and go, okay, well, you 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 but you sell some games. Well, we we can prove this sells this many copies, right? You you, we've got this. We can yeah. achieve for this price because they can again reduce. Price. I mean, yeah, yeah. See it at the high street. Talk, talking about pop culture and stuff as well, and and how these things are becoming more and more um, mainstream. Yeah. Really, um, you do have a lot of programs now that reference things far more openly. It's not just we're playing on the computer. You know, you you have a lot of things where there it's we're playing Halo and things like that yeah. you mentioned but you, you're moving into into things um, the best example is probably something like the Big Bang Theory yeah. which I know there are mixed mixed opinions about but that has very much brought a lot of games like that into the limelight because people have gone they always play this what's this and I'm yeah. sure that has boosted sales yeah. so if yeah, more things yeah. like that go on so you, you start to see things like Orphan Black yeah, there's, yeah. There's a lot of um, quite good board games played in that show. Yeah, there is. I mean, they the little dig, uh, not digs, but it was a way of showing it's being more acceptable. It's played by a group of kids. Yeah. So somebody who isn't should come to join. Yeah, no, I like this and mm. sits down and plays with it. And yeah, well, I got really excited. It's, it's not board game related, but I got really excited in Orange Is the New Black when they made a direct reference to my favourite bunch of books. Yeah. Um, which is the Name of the Wind series, uh, King Killer Chronicles, yes. by but- Patrick Rothfuss. And the guy went, oh, you've got this. Oh, my God, I love the other one. And I just went, oh, I like those. And it's being mentioned by name in a yeah. thing. Yeah. And I loved when Stranger Things opened with a game of Dungeons yeah. & Dragons. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it is nice to see less mainstream interest reflected in pop culture. But then yeah. that strengthens an interest in those particular interests. Oh, yeah. God. Um, <laughs> and it, you, know, you create almost like a feedback loop. Yeah. I think a lot of things are popular because they, they're they popular because they're talked about and they're talked about because they're popular and yeah. it goes round and round and round and round. And I, I think, interestingly enough, we're, we're, we're in a strange strange port, point where society is is taking more things on board at the moment. Yeah. Um, comic books are the recent thing that everyone's gone. They used to be the realm of geeks. Mm. Now it's very mainstream. Um, possibly because the licenses have been bought by big companies that have advertised it in the correct way yeah. and pushed yeah. things in the correct way. And so you might actually see... Because when you say board games, Most your go normal person thinks of Monopoly, yeah. Cluedo, and other things that are shit. Yes. You introduce a lot of people to the what we would consider the better side of board games, the more involved things, the more exciting things. And most people quite actually quite like them. Bizarrely, yeah. the same way that comic books have gone, hey, look at some stuff that people you thought were geeky before, but actually you can enjoy. Yeah. Mm. So you might find, again, it, it really is a, a massive boon. Yeah. But. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I, I, I think I will um, just just um, say a thank you to Shut Up and Sit Down here, yeah. um, mm. who are a wonderful gaming site, and if you don't know anything about them, go and check them out immediately. Absolutely. Uh, they're very, very good. Um, and possibly one of the things that um, got me back into board gaming, because um, I played a lot of board games as a kid, but then moved on to role play games and such like, and then 
seeing their reviews and seeing their their passion and enthusiasm got me back into yeah, yeah. Li- likewise i mean um somewhat tabletop started that but then it really kind of kicked off with shut up sit down um, yes. uh, the whole quinn's enthusiasm enthusiasm for netrunner got me looking at that yeah. yes there's a difference between tabletop seeing a game played and people having fun is 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 good and it's interesting mm. but seeing a really well presented review that explains what kind of person would like something yeah um was is very useful so they're, they're very very good um they have uh, crunched some numbers that i, <laughs> I will will draw from cool um but openly acknowledging my plagiarism um <laughs> One of the one of the things that they have noticed happening very recently is that the price of games is going up. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Without competition, a monopoly, uh, monopoly <laughs> uh, um, allows a company to set its own prices and yeah. not have competition drag those down. Uh, they were talking about how Ra, a fantasy flight game that they would have expected to cost around about forty pounds, was costing fifty um, okay. as a retail price. Um, you have the Mansions of Madness second edition. Now I bought the first edition for about sixty five pounds, I think it was. Didn't like it, mm-hmm. um, but the second edition was interesting because it has the same appeal to me, and they seem to have fixed a lot of the problems that made me not like it. Any idea what the RRP on the second edition of Mansions of Madness? Are we, we going to guess? I've read yeah. this article, so I'm going to okay. let's stick out this because all the prices. <laughs> have you? I haven't. Um, okay. I did consider buying it at one point, and I think I was turned off by the price. So that yeah. well, I'm going to guess uh, the original one was how much? Sorry, that's sixty five. I think sixty five. So I'm going to guess this. Oh is no! Gonna... Oh. oh no! Sorry, the original one was fifty. Fifty. Yeah, that that sounds. Mm. Yeah. Sorry. So I, so I reckon about seventy five quid is probably where you're looking at for the new one. See, I was going to guess that, but now you said that, I'm going to have to go high or low, aren't I? So I'm going to go <laughs> yeah, higher. Higher. Yeah. Right, okay. <laughs> yeah. So I'm saying seventy five, and Jamie's saying higher. Now, it's got less things in the box, apparently. Right. There is an app that accompanies it because it does the GMing for you. So there's, uh, some, there's, there's, there's a component that isn't visible but obviously costs money to develop. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, but it costs, the RRP is £93. Jesus. <laughs> um, That's for yeah. Mansions of Madness. Now, and to be honest, the, pro- the problem they've got there is the first edition was crap. Yeah. Yeah. Crap. I would never pay anywhere near. No. 60 quid for Mansion Man in second edition because the first one wasn't good no. yeah. it's it could be hard enough to justify the price of some of these board games because most people interpret them as oh, something you play a couple of times a year yeah, kind of thing. Yeah. so you know trying to introduce new people to as we've been talking about you know a game Monopoly costs you 30 or quid for a yeah. brand new shiny copy and they know it's only played Christmas maybe New Year's a little bit of time maybe through the year this is what they interpret board games as Yeah. you then go yeah but this one looks really really fun it's £93 yeah I'm not paying that I'd rather go it's, yeah I mean it, it depends on what's in there because there's 32 plastic figures there's 500 components there's a lot of stuff it in there it is a big box but there's also the fact that uh, Masters of Madness I don't know if the second edition is the same as the first but there's a lot of expansions as well uh, so you know it's not, you're not done with just the one box yeah yes, that, yeah. that, that that's a worry in limited itself. replay value in the first one. Um, I mean, it, you'd very rarely pay full full RRP, but it's going for eighty six pounds, yeah. eighty to eighty five pounds kind um, of thing online. I mean, if it's, if you're looking at that kind of money, you're looking at a game that's a game you want to play, yeah, more than a few times a year, yeah, that potentially has some other appeal as well. Yes, uh, the the I think the, a great example would be the Dark Souls game. That's not out yet, mm-hmm. but will be fairly hefty in price. Yeah, but it's got these figures from a setting you really like that are really nice on their own. Yeah, yeah. does Mansions of Madness uh, come with anything apart from just the game? Well, it comes with Cthulhu-based models, which are can be bought dime a dozen anywhere for anything. Yeah, it, there's there's millions of other stuff that looks like that that you could buy into yeah. if you're into that kind of collectible aspect of things. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I would compare it to Twilight Imperium in size, uh, in size, sort of terms okay. of um, what you're getting. Although I think Twilight Imperium, you probably got more stuff in there. Yeah. I mean, that's about the same price, about eighty five pounds. Imagine it's probably similar to the D and D board games like Castle Ravenloft. Yes, actually. Um, actually, personally, I actually really enjoyed that game. I mean, Castle Raven- Ravenloft is le- sixty five, seventy quid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah, is it the case that those box games are now going up in? Price. Um, they're by far not the only people to be charging that much for a game. No, no. If you want to buy Scythe, for instance, which recently finished its mm. Kickstarter, 
and um, the corners of the web which I frequent have been uh, alive with talk of scythe um, yeah. that's over a hundred pounds yeah it's just it's, it's getting it's, into hobby territory more than yeah you're, yeah. you're buying a hobby not a, I mean we we ranted and raved about GW prices and yeah. how like I, I would always think to myself if I'm going to get into a, a hobby Mm-hmm. Um, which I would class things like Dice Masters, Netrunner, Malifaux yeah, yeah. in that section because they're not a standalone product. Mm-hmm. Um, I can get into Malifaux, buy a gang, buy a couple of extra bits, a rule book, and paints, and <laughs> another gang for someone else to play for a hundred quid. Yeah, just about two two gangs. Probably not your paints and equipment. But two gangs, fifty quid. Twenty five pound a box. Thirty pound. Yeah, if you're not expanding them, thirty yeah, so thirty pound a box. Thirty pound a box, sixty, tenner for the rule book, seventy. Oh, I reckon you could get mm. uh, a GW hobby starter kit for thirty five pound. Yeah. There you go. There's yeah. your hundred five pound that's yeah. gotten you into a yeah. hobby. Yeah. Um, I mean, we've all recently started or picked back up or have continued to play Netrunner. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now I would blush to tell you how much money I've spent on Netrunner because <laughs> I haven't added it up because that would be make me sad but I didn't need to do that no the starter box was 30 yeah. quid and would have been enough to keep me going for a long long time mm-hmm. yep. obviously as a hobby as something that's you, more it's than something just you pump money into isn't it yeah you spend a lot of time deck building and you're going to play with it a lot uh, for £100 you could buy the core box and everything in the latest cycle data pack release and have all the up to date cards or two or three of the deluxe expansions mm. and have a really wide variety of things to draw from yeah, yeah. it's the same game every time isn't it yeah, yeah kind of yeah. well, I, mean, I love board games but part of the reason people have big collections of board games is because each board game is in and of itself the same thing and then you want a variety which, of different which things. is a fun experience yeah. but you, yeah like you say you want that variety I would rather yeah. if I'm looking at spending £100 £110 £120 mm. or something like that that amount of money I would probably rather go and buy four twenty-five pound games yeah. mm-hmm. than I would one hundred pound games, yeah. unless yeah. it was fucking wicked. Board yeah. gaming is your hobby. For a hundred pounds, you could buy several smaller games and have mm. a selection. You could buy code names, ticket to ride, yeah. resistance, Re- the resistance, and netrunner. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and a couple well, of probably the, a couple of micro games in there as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and you've got a selection of different things to have a yeah. hobby rather than one game. Yeah, and you know that's the downside is are they going to control the market to the point where they can pay whatever they like and that's something that we need to be <laughs> aware of cautious yeah. of yeah. it is um, um, do they end up doing what we th- basically think GW have done and pricing themselves out of being popular I don't think they probably go that far but I think that I, I, I imagine there's going to be a lot of tests in the waters no, coming up no. over the next few months who I th- oh sorry what interests me about this we they control Fancy Flight yeah, we've all started getting into Netrunner. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, would the constant, would the well, I say constant, would the releases of data packs increase in price? Mm. Yeah, because data packs are quite cheap, aren't they? about twelve pounds a, a data pack. They are. 12, and they're, they're, 12 they're about twelve pounds seems. normally. Yeah. I have yeah. noticed the last two data packs at the stores we normally frequent in fifteen, sixteen have been uh, fourteen pounds, okay. so a two pound increase. But I don't know if that's just like. A little bit of a boost when it comes out and then well, the price goes down. I, I would more new... look at that that we've been having cycles for how many years now? Three? Three and a half. They've yeah. always been about 12 quid. You could just mark that down to inflation. Yeah. yeah. Three years worth just of seems like some junk. The last two have come out since this merger. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. maybe they <laughs> turned around and said, we've not had any inflation on this so far. Mm. But don't get me wrong, if they jump up to 20 quid, yeah. right, there's a, there's an issue here with, with continuing to buy into this. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is what but, I mean about testing the waters. I think there's going to be a little bit of price hiking going on until they see a drop-off in sales, and then they'll reduce yeah. it a little bit. And they're going to test to see how far they yeah, can push yeah, people. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Which thing, you can't blame them for, I don't uh, think. Uh, not entirely, but it doesn't bode well for the whole... For the, yeah. the, the hobby, the, the, as it were. The, the thing that worries me is that the people that, when, when prices go up, the people that tend to bear the brunt of that are your friendly local gaming stores. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Because 
I am quite happy to pay the RRP for a game if I get to go in, if I get to maybe try it. Yeah. Um, as we talked about earlier, if I get to talk about somebody who makes a recommendation, yeah. um, if I get to sort of open it up and have a look and smell the insides before I uh, before I actually buy the game. And maybe you're paying ten percent extra. Yeah. If that the, the bigger that that ten percent say or fifteen percent difference becomes, the less likely people are to commit to buying it from the mm. shop. And yeah. the shops work on very small margins because they've got a lot of overheads. They've got staff to pay. They've got yeah. rent to pay. They've got space to hold, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And you know, if you take Mansions of Madness, ten percent was an extra fiver. Mm. Yeah. Now ten percent is nearly a tenner, and that's the point where people might start going actually. I need to buy online. I yep. need to not yep. buy from my local game. And also. especially as Joe said earlier, it's like it, it's starting to become a bit more accepted. So you get more people just coming off the high street and saying, "Oh, what's ball game shop? I'll go have a look." And then they walk in and see those prices. Mm. They're going to go. Hell. Yeah, they'll yeah. walk out yeah. and buy elsewhere, which Listen, could put them out of business. You, you pick yeah. up a game and go, "Oh, it's thirty quid. Oh, it's forty quid. That's fine." And yeah. then you pick up one, that and go, "Hundred quid. Oh, that's obviously an expensive one. I won't bother." Yeah. If the first game you pick up is a hundred pounds, you'd go, oh, "Fuck this shit. I'll go and do something else." Yeah. And that that's that's it. Now, do you have is that down to stores marketing and placing the products within the stores well? Are you ever going to pick up a hundred pound game and go, Oh that looks fun, let's just buy it for the sake of it, or are you gonna be selling that to people that want it? Yeah. So do you put it somewhere where people aren't just gonna stumble on it and get appalled by the price? Yeah, it's not gonna be in your shop window. No, no, no definitely not, unless it's got an yeah. amazing box. Mm. Yeah. So but we've kind of agreed it could be a really good thing, but it could yeah. also be really, 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 really bad. Um, and it might manage to be both at the same time. Yeah, it likely will. Yeah. yeah. Now another recent development um, going on from talking about Fantasy Flight is that Fantasy Flight and Games Workshop have split up. Mm. They are embedded in financial union no more. When did this happen? Last week. So since the, the merger. Yes. yes. Although yeah. there's been talks of it for about a year. It's been yeah. rumours so it's, it's, it's not a new thing. thing. Yeah. Um, and it's not happening immediately. No. Uh, no it's, but not. it's February 28th is the actual date. Yes. 2018. Uh, 2017. 2017. 2017. Yeah. Yep. Sorry. I'm time travelling. <laughs> <laughs> Can't count. Bad scientist. <laughs> um. Um, yeah, so yeah, it's not immediate. There has been warning, mm -hmm. uh, but there are a lot of games that Fantasy Flight publish that are very popular, mm -hmm. that presumably make them quite a lot of money, mm -hmm. that they will no longer be selling, and presumably make Games Workshop a lot of money in sort of splash back royalties mm -hmm. and, and that kind of thing. Uh, Jamie, I know you have a list. I do. Um, by coincidence, I don't have a list, and <laughs> there's a quite a long list. Yeah. Um, but it does include games such as, uh, if you was into it, Blood Bowl Team Manager. Um, it has Dark Heresy, um, and I know quite a lot of people have actually been really into Dark yeah. Heresy, second edition at least. Um, it has Rogue Trader, which is obviously the, the re-release uh, yeah. of the old Rogue Trader. Rogue Trader. Um, Space Hulk, and this is a big one, Talisman. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and recently, um, been quite popular, Warhammer Disc Wars yeah. is also included there. Uh, the Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay. Um, Warhammer 40,000 Conquest which I own yeah. and yeah. quite like yeah. and that's an interesting one isn't it Aaron yeah because uh, living car game like Netrunner is uh -huh. so it kind of requires not constant updating but at least a new flow of stuff it coming requires occasionally. it being alive yeah. yes and yeah. it is dead it and is an ex game it has ceased yeah. to be <laughs> and while it's not exactly the exclusive um, kind of area of FFG they are kind of the only company doing LCGs at the moment yeah. in mm. any kind of real way. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, I mean, the question is, what happens to these IPs? You know, do they, you know, who is going to pick them up or are they going to be Well, I mean, picked up? Yeah, I mean, could, could they be taken over by another company? Theoretically. What normally happens with IPs, and obviously it depends on the, how the contract works, mm. but would normally recede back to the person who originally sold them. So yeah. that's a games workshop. Now, the IP for Warhammer yeah. or, it's like if we take, take Warhammer Conquest yeah. for example or 40k Conquest um, now the Warhammer 40,000 IP goes back to them Yeah. if they sold that onto someone else and they went we want to continue making Conquest mm -hmm. would they have to buy 
the rights and the idea of the game and all that stuff from Fantasy Flight. Theoretically, so it's that a makes huge a huge minefield, mm. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. it's it really complicated. Yeah. So Fantasy so Flight could theoretically just repatch it, reskin it, yeah. something else. I so that would expect oh. these all to die. Yeah, yeah without but I mean, we've had Talisman die like twice before yeah. come back, and you know, mm. something's mm. going to happen. One but. thing I was really disappointed to see on that list because it was originally a Games Workshop game, way way back in the day, but mm. wasn't tied into actually any of their standard IPs that they use now. Was Fury of Dracula? Mm. Okay. See, I don't know much um, about that. So, you... which it it was kind of mythical. Round about the time I started getting into board games a few years ago. Um, it had been out of print for a while. It's a hidden movement game. You run around Europe trying to find Dracula. One of you is Dracula and you write down where you are secretly and yeah. you move around trying to enact your plans. Um, it has re- it only sort of got re-released a couple of months ago, yeah. a, a new edition. And now it's going and it's really hard to find because yeah. um, it's sold out. Yeah, because people are going, oh, we might not be here anymore. Well, no, it out. sold out before this news. Oh, really? Because it was really, really popular. Mm, yeah. Because people were like, it's sort of the precursor to games like Whitechapel. Um, oh, okay. And I can't remember the name of it. There's a sci fi version where you play um, sort of assassins infiltrating a, a, a secure compound mm. break in. Um, completely gone from my mind um, what it's called. But there's lots of other games on it, but it was kind of the first one like that. Yeah. Mm. Um, and it, it's just come back and now we're being told no yeah and I'm, like, I haven't had a chance to buy it yet I really hope it gets reprinted yeah. before yeah. it times out I mean what I am what I'm seeing probably is going to happen with our IP is Games Workshop will and this is really going to depend on how many of these little uh, indie developers there are left after the big mergers and buyouts that have been happening recently yeah. what they've done doing similar things to what they've done with their video games is essentially scatter shot the IP to anybody mm-hmm. who wants to buy it off them. Yep. Go right, you can have this bit, you can have that bit, you can have all these little bits of the IP, and then just pushing out games left, right, and centre. Yep. Yeah, not technically them, but other people. And if it's crap, they can wash their hands of it because well, well we didn't make it. yeah, we didn't make it. If it's great, yeah. they can you know ab- buy in on the. Yeah. Uh, Do you know what this question raises? So what, a question we've asked before. What the fuck games work on? <laughs> yeah. Fancy Flight made good shit. What are you doing? Yeah, yeah well, we, we talked about well, this in our GW podcast. Our, why, why we don't Games Workshop No More podcast. Yeah. Because we are crap. eloquent. Um, and, yeah, I feel they're devaluing their brand with their scattershot approach yeah. to mm. games. You yeah. can't look at something that's a Games Workshop computer game and know it has any quality now, no. which you oh. used to be able to do. And I don't want to see that with the board games as well. Um, one thing that's also worth mentioning, um, as Joe just pointed out, is that um, it's not only the games, but also any sort of Fantasy Flight supply, which is Fantasy, Flight, Flight, uh, Fantasy Flight's brand for things like card sleeves yeah. and other types of paraphernalia that comes with the games. Okay. Mm. Um, that's also obviously going to be gone by the wayside yeah. if it contains Games Workshop imagery. And I know that when we was at the Hobbit Hole a couple of weeks ago, Joe mm. was actually admiring some of the... Some of the uh, sleeves. Some of the sleeves. Some of the sleeves really nice. Yeah, there's ones yeah. with the with blood letters on or Eldar warlocks and, stuff. and it's really really pretty art. And yeah, stuff. to go probably to go alongside with conquest, conquest yeah. And like that. yeah. But yeah. but you could use though anyone can use those if you you're, could put your Magic the Gathering deck in it if, if you really you're, want if you're to. also a 40k yeah, fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. but so, not anymore. No. Well, buy them now. Yeah. yeah. Before they're dead. Um, yeah. Yeah, th- it's a shame. Yeah, I think the most interesting thing for me is about a month ago I spotted Fantasy Flight. They announced. Quite a long way in advance. They've Ooh. got a timer. It's about two hundred days to go till mm. release. They announced a game called Rune Wars. Yeah. Mm. Now, oh, let me just check that because there's there's different going to be played on tiny discs. <laughs> <laughs> that tiny archaic archaic it's shapes. Block. <laughs> um, yeah, it's Rune Wars is an existing IP that that Fantasy Flight have an existing sort of world and such like. But mm. they announced Rune Wars the miniatures game, mm. which looks like the way that Warhammer Fantasy Battle used to work. You will build block units, so not individual skirmishes. Mm -hmm. You have a square base with four holes in it for four models, and they have little jigsaw bits that you clip together to make Mm -hmm. a bigger unit. They've got uh, two different factions in there. Um, The Undead faction in there looks really, really nice. There's a a skeleton riding a giant carrion maggot worm thing. Yeah. That looks really really good Mm. but it's being sold not as a a board game with miniatures which is what they've done up until now it's being sold as a miniatures game in a Mm. similar way to Warhammer 40,000 Warhammer Malifaux Privateer Press games all that stuff it's it's sold as a collectible Mm. hobby 
game where you collect and build and paint. Yes. So it's interesting because Fantasy Flight do a couple of miniature games already. Okay. X Wing. Mm-hmm. Is Fantasy Flight and is yeah. a miniatures game as far as they are concerned? Yeah, as far as they're concerned, I would class that as a board game with miniatures because you buy pre painted, pre assembled yes. things. This is the thing, they're making a big deal out of the fact that these are unpainted models that you right. put colours on, you and craft your army. I mean, the timing of it, it kind of gives the impression that possibly um, Fantasy Flight started thinking about developing this yeah. around the same sort of time that the latest. <laughs> Uh, version of Warhammer Fantasy Battles yeah. was released. Um, so, what's the title of the name? Uh, the Age of Sigma. Age of Sigma was um, kind of announced and released. Mm. Um, so, the other question is maybe we talk about like um, cross pollination, the theming, mm. things like that. And there is this kind of separation between FFG and and uh, Games Workshop. Will we see any of these other styles of games that have previously been Warhammer games? Mm-hmm. Be now tied into Rune Wars because they are the actual. Well, we we create yeah. this system. We can just yeah. reskin it. Yeah. Yeah. Rune Wars, Disc Wars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh God, no. They need That's to rename that. <laughs> a bit complicated, isn't it? Yeah. Now, just looking here, they make Dust Tactics, which is a miniatures game. Yes. Yeah. Um, that looks like a, a proper one, as we would consider a miniatures game, as opposed yeah. to a board game with miniatures. Um, but does it clash with? Games Workshop brand as closely as Room Wars does because Games Workshop do have this thing where anything that kind of fantasy based is theirs yeah they are they're very they like to have that monopoly yeah. which is slipping from them yes. and this is why I think they're kind of going a bit mad at the yeah. moment because they liked having the monopoly on miniature games they like being like yeah we're the, we're the, the one that everyone plays yeah. they're not anymore because they're crap now so yeah there are some rumours going about online about what's happened and things like that, the kind of time frames for when they knew and not knowing about and renewing the licence stuff, that being a kind of mutual decision between the two yeah. of them. But essentially kind of alludes to the fact that Games Workshop starting to see FFG as a competitor, probably because of room possibly, not probably, I should say, possibly because of Room Wars, maybe even the um, the X-Wing stuff and things like that, because again, like you said, it's another Mirage's game. Possibly them seeing as a competitor yeah. or... FFG see themselves as well we can go into this kind of market we should probably split because they're not going to be happy about doing the same thing yeah, yeah or, or even uh, because they're leaving like because they might not have done something like this before out of courtesy yeah to not compete with someone they're in yeah. business with and if that business is obviously ending they have no loyalty to turn around and say, "Oh, well, we won't release this because it kind of yeah, directly yeah. completes with something you already set." Yeah, because oh, it just come across so it's come to a renewal time, yeah. so they can go. Well, the contract's ended, so yeah. we're going to do this. You go, yeah. we'll go our separate oh, ways. I mean, you go back to your designers who have come up with all these ideas and go, "You know all that stuff we said we wouldn't do because it'd compete with Games Workshop and that'd be awkward." Go Get back it. on it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, th- this is it. I mean, having a having a situation where, like you said, if, if they've been unable to come to agreeable terms. Yeah. Um, it may be a case of FFG going, well, we, we want this, this and this. And if you can't give it to us, we've got stuff planned that we'll do instead. Yeah. So rather yeah. than pumping more money into making games for you, we'll make our own war one and make Rune Wars. Yeah. So yeah. it's, it's, it's rumour, it's speculation, yeah. it's believable. It'd be quite interesting to see. Most of the good rumours are. It's a big shake-up, isn't it? There's yeah. a lot of good, good games that were going to disappear and a big g- gaps in the market. Apparently. And as, as they are now owned by this massive corporation, yeah. they might be able to put more money and make this yeah. really good. Mm. And we have seen Games Workshop making more board games recently. Mm. They've made Kill Team, is it? The yeah. assassin game. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, might not have got the name right. Um, and they made Warhammer, a Warhammer Quest new version. Yeah. And they, which is a board game as we've, well. We've talked before about them planning all of their specialist game releases, like Blood Bowl and stuff. It's a fair way off, but those things are coming. Yeah. yeah so maybe FFG that. wanted in on that. Yeah. Yeah. It's a board game, not a thingy game. We should partner for it. And they've gone, no. Yeah. You know, there's, all, there's all kinds there's of things. There's all sorts of things. There could be all sorts of different ways this has occurred, but yeah. it is interesting to see it get shaken up. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, well, sad for those people who've 
bought into World yeah. Conquest yeah, or something like that. Yeah, especially Conquest. Because all your other games, they're going to exist. If you've got them on your shelf, you can play them, can't you? Yeah. Whereas, yeah, we, I mean, you, can you can still play Conquest. Play Conquest but, yeah. I mean, I've looked at packs and gone, oh, maybe if they release this, I might pick that. The, the oh, I like the Dark of... Eldor in it. I might buy that. Yeah. But now, my brain just goes, it's not getting ongoing support. So if anything they've bought out mm. now is unbalanced mm. that they plan on fixing later. No. Yeah. Yeah. Would you get into it, Jamie, knowing that it's not going to get any more I, stuff? I wouldn't, know. No. I think a big part of the appeal of those sort of court games is that they move, they adapt, they change. They're fluid. Yeah. 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 They are living. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, it's like maybe outside of the potential of maybe just buying a core set and just playing the core set as a, as a self-contained board game. Yeah, yeah. Um, as I've been quite tempted to do with some of the Dice Masters sort of yes. box sets, like the Turtles one. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't ever want to get into collecting it any more beyond yeah. that, and especially now knowing that it's going to die. Yeah. 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 Cool. Um, so yeah, so strange times. Yes. Um, just to finish off, then mm. um, we didn't talk about your preview, did we, for next week? You can do that now. Yeah. So I've um, I found out recently that I'm going to be going to EGX on the 23rd, and apparently there's going to be lots of uh, tabletop things there. Now, looking at the um, press releases and things that have come out so far. Uh, there's not much information on what is going to be there because it's really obviously focused mostly on video games. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I do intend to go along, see what they have, and maybe uh, do a bit of a report on you know what we see. Yeah, awesome. awesome. Is that Eurogamer Expo? It is. It's been renamed. It was the Eurogamer Expo. It's now just called EGX. Okay, it's not the first one then. No. No. Okay. Yeah, I hadn't actually heard of it. Yeah, yeah, they do it. I don't know how many years have been doing it. Yeah, a little while. Now. I know Eurogamer. Um, they're, they're patchy, but they do cover board games and tabletop mm. things. Yeah. Um, they quite often get Quinn's from Shut Up and Sit Down. For yeah. I've seen a couple yeah. of his reviews on there because um, he used to write for them and things yeah. like that. So there, there is there, there's precedent for them. To yeah. So it's going to be interesting to see what they have. Um, you know, might even see if we can grab an interview of somebody while I'm there. So. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, that could that be something to to look forward to. Um, I kind of want to go. Yeah, I would have liked to go. <laughs> Because those sort of things are really cool normally, but yeah, life is hard. Yeah. Um, all right. Finally, then, just to, to round up and let Aaron go home. Yes. Because um, we're we've overrun. Um, have we played anything new? Anything interesting recently? We haven't mentioned. Is there anything cool going on tabletop gaming wise that um, we should talk about? Netrunner. <laughs> yeah, we've been playing a lot of Netrunner. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's been interesting. I've had quite a few people have. You've had Joe. You've had someone mention to you. We've had a couple, couple of people. Being I've interested. had a couple of people mention to me that they're interested. I played a game with a a friend who is a very casual, light sort of gamer. Mm. Uh, when he came round, I hadn't seen him for a while, and he was really interested as well. It seems to have an appeal. I, it does. I've managed to get a lot of people into that one now. Yeah, um, um, we succeeded with me and Aaron yeah. and, and and Joe. Joe yeah, 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 you yeah. introduced me to it. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, and quite a lot it's of all your people fault. around <laughs> the area. Um, and yeah, I have, uh, I did have a intro game with a new member of staff um, uh, where I work uh, last week, and he's suddenly really into wanting to get on board as well. Is it someone in your your area? Yes. Oh, okay, cool. I've got a, so yeah. someone who's mentioned to me is someone I work we work with as well. Yeah, so, so he's where. suddenly really into Netrunner, potentially. Mm. Um, yeah. yeah, I think there's... There's definitely interest from people, and you know, being from the Peterborough area, if there's anyone from Peterborough out there who's maybe bought the core box and then hasn't played for a while because it's sort of died off, mm. or if you're interested in starting but you're worried about finding opponents, get in touch, leave a comment, mm. um, poke us on Facebook, let us know on Twitter, however you want to get in contact, yeah. because if we can get enough people interested, we can e- encourage our local stores to run more tournaments maybe do some draft tournaments increase what's going on or you could just you know we can we'll go to the pub yeah. and have a night at yeah, the pub yeah. playing shit well, potentially we could run it ourselves if we well this we is the thing we are, we are basically we are looking oh, into the critical twits netcon yeah, yeah. yeah we are looking into getting local stuff working yeah. yeah if it doesn't go through the store then we will be looking into doing it ourselves yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, and running something somewhere yeah do a pop-up yeah. thing and run a, a Netrunner event yeah. so if there yeah. is interest do let us know because we, we are keen on getting this yeah. going locally yeah yeah, um, and it'll be really good training for when I eventually crush Aaron underneath my grim uh, but exquisitely tailored boot <laughs> In He's upset at you beating him at the tournament, yeah. Aaron. That's what. That's yeah. Yes. Cyberpunk yeah. does look good, doesn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'd need I'd need some fancy boots, possibly with some big buckles on or something. That's a bit cyberpunky. 
maybe blades that shoot out the laces. I don't know. You're looking at me like I'm mad. <laughs> Nano <I> weave <laughs> laces. <laughs> Yeah. Um, Don't validate his ideas. <laughs> Sorry, he'll chop his own fingers off where he tries to tie them. <laughs> yeah. And then he can't net run. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and we did a, last week, we did a, our very first net runner based episode. So if you haven't checked that out, if you're, you're intrigued, have a look at that. Mm. Um, still soldiering away on Gen Lab Alpha. We are. Um, mm. Enjoying that. Let, let you all know that um, I talked a lot about Murakami, the giant yak. Um, he is an ex yak. Well, he's, he's a missing yak. He's a missing yak. Yeah. Um, so I'm now playing a four armed dog with a death wish. Look, good. One of the characters Ooh. is convinced is actually a lizard in disguise. Yes. Yeah. And Jamie's joined us for that as well. He has, yeah. Um, and yeah. It's been quite interesting. I know, a red squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Jamie's going to join us as well for talking about our next roleplay thing about how to run a game as we've already covered how to how to play um, yeah. so it'd be good we've, we've covered how to make a character we're, then, yeah. we're going to cover how to run a session yeah. Yeah. or create a session in, in fact as well Yeah. and then follow that up with maybe a, a general guide to playing and ideas and stuff like that yes yeah so sounds good cool yeah. uh, so thank you very much for listening uh, this has been our very first ever board talk uh, for September 2016. I've been Brian Ennis. I've been Aaron Vitsky. I've been Joe Lewin. And I've been Jamie Myland. And collectively we have been the Critical Twits. Until next time, thank you very much. Make sure you like, share, subscribe. Let people know about what we do if you have enjoyed it. Thank you. Bye. 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 We all said bye. Yay.